Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host, Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience, and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their advice. If you would like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review as it will help others to learn about Autism Stories. I'm excited to announce our first two podcasts that will be part of Stimmy Vibrations, a day to celebrate autistic voices on April 2nd. The first podcast comes from Nira Birch, the I'm Not Drunk, I'm Autistic podcast. And the second is from Maisie Sotentayo from Autism Career Pathways. Nira will be pondering the true meaning of Autism Acceptance Day and will discuss strategies for decompression after meltdowns in her podcast. And Maisie will discuss special interests as a career foundation. A link to learn more about STEMI Vibrations and to register so you aren't missing out on this day to celebrate Autistic Voices can be found in the podcast description of this episode. On today's episode of Autism Stories, I will talk with Mary Nixon Hahn. Mary talks with me about being an autistic woman in the U.S. military her experiences of working in customer service, and authoring a book on creating inclusive employment. We hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Mary, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here. Wanted to start out and learn where does your story in the autistic community begin? My story starts, I guess, after the military, I joined the military because I was kind of a loner and uh, an only girl and I was raised with brothers. So I went through school playing a lot of sports and just not really like a part of anything. So I went to the military and jumped out of airplanes and spent my time attempting to learn different things. I just was feeling like there was nowhere I could really turn. I didn't feel really qualified to go to college because I wasn't really a great student. So I went to the military, and that's uh, where my story begins. And I owe a lot of that to my father who served before my time. So I kind of went in because it was in our family tree. So. Now, I'm, I think I'm pretty scared of heights, so when you said you were jumping out of airplanes, uh, that really struck me. Can you tell me about that experience? For those that think uh, jumping out of a perfectly good airplane is something that is widely known, I strongly disagree because a lot of times when you're training to jump out of airplanes for the military, it's usually the reserve is flying the airplane, so... It's not always the uh, most steady opportunity as far as I was concerned. So, yeah, there is that. (laughs) Now, you mentioned you were in the military. Um, From my understanding, um, you were in the military um, prior to um, learning you are autistic. Looking back, what were challenges for you as an autistic woman um, in the military? For me, 90% of it was being able to communicate. I didn't always necessarily have the answer that they wanted or was looking for. I usually was pretty much off topic and unless I considered, considered anything athletic like running or something like that, I was a little lost. I was, however, pretty good with shooting and stuff like that because that's how I was raised with my family. So shooting weapons or guns and stuff was not an issue, but when it came to kind of common sense stuff, I I was like way off topic. (laughs) And so for me, it was a little bit challenging because I didn't always understand what they wanted. And 
usually I was the brunt of a lot of jokes. So were you involved in much combat in your time in the military? Actually, I was stationed on a flight, so in 1988 I was stationed at Fort Bragg, and that was the year that Noriega was going crazy in Panama, so we were on a flight zone. I was with an air defense artillery unit, so I refilled generators and I was a mechanic. When we finally got to go home, we realized that we were the next one to be called up, so I can safely say that's the reason I don't drink Mountain Dew anymore. And um, so if there are autistic women or men, for that matter, listening uh, to this interview, and maybe they have some um, interest in joining the military, what would be your advice to them? I think since I've done some research and did some different times, compared to when I was in to where, I, where they are now, unfortunately, they're, they're not allowing people with a designation of autism in the military. That's kind of disheartening for me because I look at my three sons who are on the spectrum and probably two out of three of them can join. I think a lot of it you need to have, you need to really be careful now about how you disclose with autism because there's been at least two folks that I know of that have been home sent home from just West Point Academy because they did disclose that they were autistic and they would not let them remain in the military. For me, that's a huge issue because just looking at two of my sons, they have the utmost capability to provide anything the military would need as long as they had a, a job code for them. So a lot of it is being cautious about how you disclose it. When I went in, I didn't have to disclose it. Like you said before, I didn't find out until after I came back from the military that I was autistic. So I think this day and age, everybody's so into just put the people in the right place with what they need. And I think a lot of people with the extraordinary talents like autistic people have kind of get short changed on that. And for me, it's, it's kind of a, kind of like a smack in the face because. Um, there's some really gifted people out there that uh, would be beneficial to what the military has to offer for Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, just like businesses miss out on autistic talent, the military certainly is as well. Now, yes. now I know beyond the military, um, you've you spent many years working um, at Walmart, and I read that you became a leader of your local Walmart team. What were some of your leadership responsibilities? You know, I spent over 20 years in retail. I actually uh, wrote a couple books about it. A lot of it is you know, autistic people need to be taught routine and stuff. And so for me, it was just trying to find where I've been in. And so I had to set goals and now, three years ago, I, uh, I achieved my goal of being a customer service supervisor and was able to do a negative situation for so many years and turning it into a positive situation and using the positivity and my knowledge and background of what to look for kind of along the abilities of different people and be able to just come alongside them. I, I, I don't like tag for like, oh, you're a supervisor, you're this, that. So again, I'm a kind of person, I come alongside people. You learn more walking together instead of standing there and pointing or teaching from a distance. I'm very much a hands-on person. And so for me to end my career in the supervisory position with the respect that I ended up with and still receive to this day. It was, it's interesting to lead in my position and just know and watch body language and facial expressions on how people react to 
so I'm a side by side bidder, and even though I'm CEO of my own company and people want to label me and put me on a pedestal, in all reality, I'm a very humble leader. And I've always told my crew that it's never about me, it's about we. You know, that's where we're at. Now, during your time at Walmart, you gave uh, an important presentation um, in regards to neurodiversity at the workplace. Uh, you know, I guess the first thing I'm interested in is how many people, um, work, work employees at Walmart, got to see this presentation, and what was your message regarding supporting neurodivergent people um, working in, at Walmart or in the workplace? about six years ago to kind of live out something my dad had taught me when I was a kid. Teach people how you want to be treated. So I got to present to Walmart on four different WebExes. It was a regional presentation management at Walmart required to do once a month a diversity training. So I was fortunate enough to have a manager within my group that knew that I was autistic and asked me to you know, see what I could do to come up with a presentation. So uh, I basically came up with 13 different points that they could use to not only interview, but how to gain the attention and relationship with folks that are, are differently abled or unique, however you want to put it. So on four different WebEx, I had 2,700 people total. I read three states and received multiple emails back. They were impressed and that they wanted to know more. And so at that point, I had actually written a ebook that they could purchase. And so I got to share that way. And then for me, it opened a whole bunch of new doors for that. And it really changed my focus on how I looked at my management as well. So. 2,700 people, I never even dreamed that. And so, yeah, it's been fun. And reach back out with those emails and stuff. People just, they, it's out there, but people want people like myself to tell them, how can I help? So, you're talking about the biggest retail company in the world. And, and so, to get the response that I did was really amazing. So, yeah, I was really, really, I was really excited about that because after that I think people started looking a little deeper and a little differently at how they could put me in, in a spot to help others within the company. Now you, you mentioned uh, ab about an e-book um, and I believe you've written two books on the subject of autistic people in the workplace. For those that might be interested in learning more about these books um, and, and possibly purchasing them, how can they go about doing so? And the title of my book is From the Inside Out, and then I did a strategy guide from there. And if you go to Amazon, and they can find it there. The first book will come up automatically, and then I have I know my second book will follow underneath of it, so both of them are there. I believe one fourteen ninety five and the other one twenty ninety five. And if you get them from me personally, I actually will autograph them and send them to you free of charge. So for the set of them, I, I personally, for me, if I send them to you, I only charge thirty dollars for both books, and I don't charge you for the shipping just because I appreciate the uh, gesture. Now, a common saying in the autistic community is when you've met one person that's autistic, you've met one person that's autistic. But all autistic people have things in common. So, you know, I thought you might be a really good person to talk about this, not just because you're autistic, but because you have three children that are autistic as well. I'm wondering, what has your experience as an autistic parent to autistic children taught you about diversity of the autistic experience? Having sons on the spectrum and being on the spectrum myself, I think the biggest thing is instead of us as parents or even our 
instead of trying to answer for them, you let them express themselves the best way they know how. I really worked hard on listening to learn because I have all boys. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm the only female. So, you know, and I think a lot of times as a mom, you want the answers right away and you're not going to get it right away. They need time to process just like you do. So if you look at a process type situation, everybody needs time to process. Some take time and some they can answer you right away. And I think the biggest thing is listen to learn. And then another thing for me is instead of expecting them to do something and know it, let them teach you what you need to teach them. My biggest thing is just even when I have friends that ask me to come and be around their kids and see what I think, you know, 90% of what you need to know is right in front of you. And each person is going to teach you either by body language, facial expression, or communication through this language or however they communicate. I have multiple people that have kids that work with ACC devices, love them, absolutely love them, you know. But each kid, each parent, each person with autism learns in a different way. And instead of rushing to everything, you know, give them money. They'll teach you, and you can teach them. It's a two-way street, Doug. A- absolutely. Um, I think listening to learn is essential. Have, have, were there, have there been any you know, specific things along your journey that helped you to become better at listening to learn? I think the biggest thing for me is if you look at the two different sides, you look at a female side and a male side, a female wants you to answer right away and, and they're going to be all in your face where I think my boys, even my husband, and even the gentlemen that I work with, even my coaches I work with, the biggest thing for my boys is listening to what they're saying because, again, right away, naturally, I want to I want an answer right away, but they say things different. You know, it's and that's just the common theme through all my boys. It, you just have to listen. <laughs> I guess I just it's something that I've obviously had to learn because mm-hmm. I boys, boys, boys everywhere, military everywhere. So you know, I think the strongest suit for me as a mom is just to listen because. Not everybody wants an answer. They just want to understand. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes people just need support and maybe a little validation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the same thing. You know, I, I we talked about my military experience, and that's something. If you take two circles and you overlap them, the commonality between my military experience and being a veteran on and being an autistic parent, listening to what I have to say or listening to what the veteran has to say, or that homeless person, you know, just because I'm autistic and my son's autistic doesn't mean that we are any different. The only difference between you and I is how I think and how I communicate. Literally, that is it. You know, if you're going to sit here and judge me because of my super stringy gray hair or or the color of my shirt, then you truly don't know what's in your heart. So if you've taken five minutes to listen to them, it gives you something more to go on. Well said, Mary. And I, you know, really thank you for spending time with me and um, getting to learn a little bit more about your story. Well, thank you, and I appreciate the time. And again, you know, if anybody that uh, hasn't connected with me or wants to reach out to me, I'm on Facebook, but I spend more time on LinkedIn now because I'm trying to develop a more of a business relationship so yeah just reach out to me to connect and you know i'm more than willing to do podcast or you know sometime it'd be cool if we could get together and do an actual personal touch on a, on a presentation or something thanks so much to mary for the conversation to learn more about mary check out the link in the podcast description of this episode 
I really liked what Mary said about working besides people and not standing from a distance and pointing fingers because that's exactly what our coaches at Autism Personal Coach do to help our clients get their needs met and desires fulfilled. If this sounds like the type of support that's missing in your life, then you can book a free call with me today to discuss working with Autism Personal Coach. A link for the free call can be found in the podcast description of this episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories, and if you did, if you could tell a friend, foe, or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable experience as you when listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. On the next episode of Autism Stories, we will discuss what autistic leadership looks like. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.